everyone. Here it is. It's Wednesday and we're in December and I know it's a little crazy. I miss you guys. I wish we were together, but I wanted to share something with you and it's kind of, you see it sitting right here. I want to share a little bit about that here in a second, but first of all, let's get into the word of God. I'm in Philippians, which is in the New Testament. So it's part of that go eat pop pop corn the g e p c galatians ephesians philippians colossians that part the thing that i've been talking to you guys about forever learning the books of the bible well i'm in philippians chapter 2 and I'm just reading verses 4 and 5 here's what it says each of you should look not only to your own interests but also to the interests of others your attitude should be the same as that of christ jesus isn't that great? I love that. Now, here we are. It's Christmas. And sometimes, especially when you're a kid, when you're a kid, you start thinking about what you want. Now, when I was a little kid, I know it dates me and you probably have no clue what I'm talking about. But when I was a kid, there was these catalogs. It was the Montgomery Wards and the Sears Roebuck catalog. And they were like thick. And we would take a notebook and we would go through the catalog and we would write down everything that we wanted. And our list would be like 5,000 things long because we would go through the catalog. And then mom and dad would tell us, prioritize. You wrote down all the things. What do you really want? And so we had to figure out from our list of forever, what do we really want? Like our top five items. We had to star them. We had to put a star them or rewrite our whole list. Well, of course, we don't want to rewrite the whole list. So we had to figure out what did we really want. Well, we were very poor. Very poor. So there was no way we were going to get everything on that list. If we got one thing on that list, it was pretty exciting. Because mostly we got clothes. And my mom was this great seamstress. And so we always got clothes and we always got stuff from grandma and grandpa. And then we would have to go shopping for each other. Now, I remember this one time we had, I don't remember what our spending limit was for each other. I really don't remember, but, um, we would go to the store and, um, we would buy something for each other. So I had to buy something for my two sisters. And it was not like we spent a lot of money. I don't even remember what, what our spending limit was, but I got a little doll set for my little sister. And it was this little, little doll and it came with a stroller for the doll. And she was like a mommy doll. And then there was a stroller and then in the stroller there was a baby doll. I didn't like it. I, I, I didn't like it. And I was pretty blunt about it when I opened it up. I was like, what am I going to do with that? Yeah, I, I got in some trouble over that one. And my mom and dad sat down with me and said, you know, your sister walked all over the store. She spent more time looking for your gift than anybody else's. And she actually spent more money on your gift than anybody else's. She had to borrow extra money because she saw this gift and she really wanted it for you. It kind of took me back. I wasn't prepared for that because all I saw was this doll I didn't want. And then I didn't like getting in trouble over it. And my little sister and I were never very close growing up super close now but not then but I realized I had hurt her feelings and I started thinking just the other day about that incident and how sometimes we put so much into our gift that we don't think about the gift we don't think about the cost we don't think about the giver of the gift so that got me thinking about this. So this is a piece I got 
when I went to Israel. Now going to Israel was a tremendous gift. It was one of the most breathtaking opportunities I've ever had in my life. And I feel so um, blessed to have had the honor to go and to spend that time with my daughter. Well, we were in Bethlehem a couple of days and while we were in Bethlehem, we got to go to the shop where they had wood carvers. And supposedly they were the best wood carvers in Israel, is what we were told. And they had hundreds of wood carvers that sent their stuff to the store. So we were walking around and this piece just spoke to me. And so you have Jesus, of course, on the cross. And then I'll kind of zoom in here a little bit. So down here, you have the cherubim children they got little wings and they're reaching up to Jesus you can see them trying to minister to Jesus on the cross but it started and then I want you to look at the face of Jesus it's so intricate it's so detailed even the back you see the feet you can even see the little toes on the on the piece it's just very intricate it's very detailed well I had to I had to get it spent way too much money on it should not have spent that much money on it but it captured me and it got me thinking about the gift of Jesus you know Jesus came as a gift for us from God he loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus to this earth as a baby for the sole purpose that he would die for us he sent his son his one and only son to earth to die out of love for us even knowing how we treat God how we ridicule God how we take his name in vain how we put God last in our life and it got me thinking about this incredible gift at Christmas of Easter of every day of our lives that God gives to us and um, I don't know, it just kind of hit me that during this time of Advent, we spend so much time preparing and thinking about the gifts we're going to give to each other. But what about the gift that was given to us? And not, I'm not just talking about the baby in the manger. I'm talking about the gift of forgiveness, the gift of salvation. God did that for you because he loves you so much. That's the best gift you can ever receive. Better than money, better than Xbox, better than a new pair of boots or whatever it is you may want. It's better than anything in the Sears Roebuck or Montgomery Ward's catalog, that's for sure. It took me a long time to realize that. And I love to give gifts love to give gifts. I love to do things. Now, this was in the upper room and the this was the reading from uh, Monday and I just kind of want to read it for you. So it's, here's what it says. I volunteer with an organization that provides meals to people in need. One day when I delivered a meal to Tom, I noticed a repairman approaching the home next door. I learned that Tom had secretly paid to have his neighbor's broken hot water heater replaced, knowing the family was unemployed and had young children and no funds to cover such a cost. I asked Tom why he didn't tell the family about his generous act, and he replied, because I want the credit to go to the Lord, not me. Isn't that incredible? I mean, that's a huge expense. You know, several hundred dollars to fix that hot water heater for this family and then to not go over and say hey just wanted to let you know I I'm the one that did that he didn't want the credit to be for him this man was getting meals delivered for him so he was on a tight income as well but he saw somebody in need and wanted to help them without the glory you know when I give a gift sometimes I like to give gifts so that nobody knows. I love that. So our youth 
we do the Holiday Spirit Co-op. And I know there's different families that do that as well. And I love the Holiday Spirit Co-op because it's an opportunity for us to help someone we don't know have a present under the tree for Christmas. Uh, somebody who may never get a gift. An opportunity for them to have something. I don't know who they are. I don't know what they look like. I don't know their names. I know their age and I know whether they're a boy or a girl. And this year was very different because usually you guys get to go out and go do the shopping. Well, this year I got to go do it. I took my daughter with me and we bought all the gifts. I wrapped all the gifts. They're ready to go to the church, but it's an opportunity for us. Now you can still participate in the Holiday Spirit Co-op. You can call the church and find out about the Holiday Spirit Co-op. You have to do it quick because uh, I can't remember what the deadline date is, but you can do that and provide a Christmas gift for someone that you don't know and they won't know who you are either. It's an opportunity for you to give without getting the glory. You guys have a great Christmas. Focus on the true gift that's offered to you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to remember that during this holiday season and the hubbub and the excitement that's really all about you and the greatest gift that you have given us, the gift of your son, Jesus. In your very precious name, amen. I can't wait to see you guys on Zoom and some different exciting things that we're going to be doing over Christmas. So I look forward to seeing you. Bye.